Good morning. Very warm welcome to each one of you. Um, it's glad to be able to come together and worship God. Uh, there are a number of things on the screen um, that you have uh, seen. There are uh, quite a few people uh, on the screen that are needing our prayers. And um, one more uh, person, that's my, uh, one of my students, um, who has three sons and um, they both, uh, they, all of them have something wrong with their blood and they have to get this blood replaced uh, every now and then. Um, so he has asked for our prayers, so if you could please uh, remember his name is Neil Philip. Uh, so if you can remember uh, this um, a man and uh, his family in your prayers, that will be highly appreciated. Um, so there are other things, uh, for instance, um, food bank, remember uh, we have started it, uh, collecting the items and uh, thank you very much for all those who have uh, contributed already and uh, those who do plan to, to bring them in, please do uh, bring them in and outside you can see uh, there are uh, boxes and you can uh, put these items there. Remember last week I announced uh, one of our uh, church members, that's person in the role. I have not uh, seen him uh, personally for a long time and I've talked some to some other people who don't remember him either. But his name is David McCall. Uh, he passed away and his funeral will be here on Thursday, 11 a.m. So if any of you know uh, him and you want to be part of that service, uh, please do remember that. Um, if you don't, uh, you can still pray for the family. Um, these are the things I think I uh, need to bring to your attention. If there is anything else, please do let me know and I will announce uh, that particular thing. Uh, let us now turn our attention to worshipping God. Our call to worship is taken from the book of Matthew, Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9 and verses 35 to 37. It says, Jesus went round visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom, and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. As he saw the crowds, his heart was filled with pity for them, because they were worried and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. So he said to his disciples, the harvest is large, but there are few workers to gather it in. Amen. We worship God with our first hymn, All Creatures of our God and King. Mission praise number seven. If we are able to, let us stand together and worship God.
Let us now pray together. God, we come to you with hearts full of gratitude that you have called us to praise you and be your voice here on earth as it is in heaven. May our lives be a living sacrifice holy to you as we unite in the truth that you are our risen saviour. Father, you have inspired us to celebrate this holy day, the memory of our saviour, as you, having finished on earth the great work of our redemption, you carried up your glorified humanity above the clouds to its eternal rest. We pray we keep our eyes on you and take off the vanities here on earth. May we continue to follow and obey you. You have overcome death and hell and commissioned us to do your will. God, we want to live in the place where your glory abides. Fill us with your spirit this morning, the place of perfection, where spirit and soul collide in the never-ending expanse of love. Saturate every dark crevice of our soul with the light of your glory. Strip us of everything that doesn't look like you. Beautify us with your presence. May our thoughts flow in unity with yours, teeming with faith and free from fear. Refine us with your holy fire so that all is within us echoes your holiness. You are our passionate pursuit, our treasure and our delight. We follow after you with wholehearted desire, no longer living for ourselves. Let your favour rest upon us, so that it's seen everywhere we go. Set us apart as your holy vessel and let the overflow of your spirit empower those around us. May your words reflect your heart and carry your nature. We will sing your praises forevermore, Lord, because of your unfailing love. We are forgiven and restored. We come to you thankfully, praying as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Um, come, let us praise the Lord. Mission praise number 92. And it says, come, let us praise the Lord with joy, our God acclaim. His greatness tell abroad and bless his saving name. Let us stand together and bless his name.
Our passage this morning is also taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, and this passage is so familiar to many of us, and some of us may have uh, uh, memorized it. But it is these familiar passages sometimes are overlooked. Um, and so we hear this morning from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Amen. And God bless this reading of his holy word. Before we um, talk about or think about this passage once again, uh, let us worship God with this uh, another very familiar hymn, As the Deer Pants for the Water, Mission Praise number 37. passage is very familiar and uh, whenever we talk about mission uh, many people do jump to this passage and uh, uh, with some uh, justification however uh, when we talk about God's mission it is much more than that Chris Wright who's a director of Langham uh, Bible uh, studies or uh, a, a partnership and uh, uh, he is an Old Testament scholar, has written a book uh, on the mission of God. It's called The Mission of God, uh, in which he, and this book, I have to tell you, this is a very significant book which has changed quite a lot on how people think about God's mission. So if any of you 
are really interested in reading that, that will be the book that uh, uh, you should be get your, getting your hands on. And so in that book he writes this. So let me just read uh, a wee bit about that. He says that the whole Bible reveals the mission of God to bring all things in heaven and on earth into unity under Christ. Reconciling them through the blood of his cross. And fulfilling his mission, God will transform the creation broken by sin and evil into the new creation in which there is no more sin or curse. God will fulfill his promise to Abraham to bless all nations on the earth through the gospel of Jesus the Messiah. God will transform that fractured world of nations that are scattered under the judgment of God into the new humanity that will be redeemed by the blood of Christ uh, from whom every tribe, nation, tongue and language uh, they, they will be gathered together to worship uh, this Savior. God will destroy the death, corruption and violence when Christ returns to establish his eternal reign of life and justice and peace. And you can see that's a lot in it. Now I'm not going to unpack everything in it, otherwise we will be spending weeks sitting here. But what he says, Chris Wright, he gathers all of it under five headings. And so he says, the first one is evangelism. That's the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. The second one is teaching, the discipleship. Third one, he says, compassion, justice, and the last one, care for creation. So under these headings, he unpacks God's mission. Some of us might say, but doesn't the Great Commission just tell us to go and evangelize? Go and just talk about Christ. Well, he says, it doesn't just say that. Each of these five marks is connected to the Great Commission when the Lordship of Christ is at the center of it. Jesus begins with his Lordship. If you have heard this reading carefully, you would have noticed that Jesus didn't just start off by saying, go and evangelize or make disciples. He starts before that, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he says, therefore, that is conjunction, conjunction, which is connecting the previous part with the things to come. He says, therefore, go and make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And he goes on. And so making disciples is connected with the authority of Jesus. We build the church because Jesus is the Lord of the church. We serve the society because Jesus is Lord of all. We care for creation because Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth. Not only heaven. And so the earth is the Lord's and everything in it 
the, by the, the psalmist says, the earth belongs to God. We are merely stewards of this earth. And so the Great Commission addresses the church, the society, and creation. All three are broken and suffering. All three are included in this restorative mission of God. He has the plan to restore all of it. And so we can group these five things that I just mentioned under three. That is evangelism, teaching and building the church. Compassion and justice. You know, all these things serving the society. All of these things come under these three things. Because our calling is of the same as of Abraham. Remember Abraham was asked to be a blessing to the nations. Not only blessing to each other, but blessings to the nation. We take our mandate of you know, taking care of creation from Genesis 1, where God created all things in heaven and on earth and then he created human beings saying to them multiply and rule the earth ruling the earth simply means to taking care of it not destroying it that is not our mandate mandate is to keep it as best as we possibly can and so under these three things I want to just focus for a few minutes. Uh, first thing, the building the church. You see Jesus said go and make disciples baptizing them and then he says teaching them. You know evangelism is the word which has uh, become rather alien to us. When we talk about evangelism, people shudder sometimes. But evangelism is that Jesus is Lord. That is what we proclaim. And evangelism is, first of all, that I surrender to his Lordship and I am commanded to bring others under his Lordship. And so evangelism is, as somebody has said, gospeling. You know, gospel, gospeling. It is the announcement of something that is good news because something has happened. It is the announcement of the event. And sometimes we call it, you know, cross, the cross event. If some of us are familiar with uh, the word evangelism, then we should remember that evangelion in Greek was not a Christian word. It was a normal day-to-day -day word about announcing something. It was the word used to declaring something that the Caesar had done. And the gospel writers took that word to communicate the fact of, of Jesus' death and resurrection by using this word evangelion, evangelism, telling others about Christ and his lordship. And so when Mark says we have the good news, it is the good news about Jesus. No, it's not good news about some wedding is taking place or some other festival or some community has gathered. No, it is about Jesus and his Lordship. It is announcing that this God who created the world 
has acted to save this world through his son Jesus Christ. He comes as a Messiah and he dies as the Savior. He is going to come back as the King to restore his creation. And you can see that all of these things are interconnected with each other. You cannot separate them and look at them individually. It is good news for those who accept what God has done for our salvation. And when, God, when people respond to that, when they realize what God has done, they respond to that. That becomes a good news for them. When, when, when people do that, then they can be baptized into a relationship with God, the Father who loves them, God the Son who died for them, and God the Holy Spirit who empowers them to live a Christian life, live a life in relationship with God the Father, God the Son. This is what is building the church. And so when we use this word, the gospel or gospel, it is not a formula by which we just do one, two, two and two together and that becomes four. No. The gospel is the good news about God and what he has done. And evangelism is announcing about that good news. And so we keep that a slight difference in mind. You see, <clears throat> when we understand this, it is imperative for every one of us not only to understand it, but personally surrender to Christ and His Lordship. Once we know the significance of the gospel, we will, we will feel compelled to tell others about God's plan for their life and for the whole creation. Teaching and discipleship are also a vital part of this mission. Teaching within the church is to obeying the Great Commission. Obeying Jesus' commands as his disciples and teach others to obey everything that he has commanded. This means that we must be prepared to educate ourselves about this plan, God's plan. Personally reading and learning and seeking to grow in knowledge of knowing God more and more intimately. You know, I have said many times and I will continue to say it. Please do not rely on one or two person in terms of our own spiritual growth. Try to find out for yourself. Be part of some Bible study group or some other Christian group where we can grow more and more closer to God. Our own Bible study takes place on Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. And so you are all welcome. Because this is an integral part of the mission that we talk about. And then compassion and justice. Jesus tells his disciples to teach others to observe everything. You know, not only to tell people about Christ, but what Christ has said, everything. And what has he said? He said many things. He has commanded many things. For instance, he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, 
or righteousness is the same thing. He says, seek the kingdom, or seek first the kingdom of God and his justice. And that is righteousness. And then all other things will be added unto you. He said, love each other as I have loved you. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. In everything, that is all included. Love your neighbors as yourself. You know, Paul's first missionary journey was a famine relief. He took aid to other parts of the churches from, you know, to, 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 to the churches that needed the help. He brought help from other churches to Jerusalem. In his letter to Titus, in the six times he says, he says, we should be doing good works. We are not saved by the good works. But those who are justified, those who are Christian, those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they must be eager to do good. Obeying, obeying the commands of Jesus is part of the mission of Jesus. Why? Because he himself went about doing good. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, uh, we, we read, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth uh, with the Holy Spirit and he uh, and uh, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That is what he did. And if he is our Lord, and we are under his command, that is what we ought to be doing. This means being active in work of justice and compassion. And then lastly, we are to care for the creation. So where, we, where do we see care for the crea creation in the Great Commission? Where do we see in the passage that we saw, uh, read? Well, it is it's not explicitly said, but it is implied in Jesus' opening words. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Heaven and earth was the, the typical Jewish way of talking about all creation. He is Lord and Savior of all creation. Here is Jesus saying, now you know <clears throat> who I am. You know, you know I hold the authority. I am the Lord of this universe and there is no other. And so since he is God or, or, and Lord of all uh, the earth, wherever we go on this planet earth, we are walking on Christ's earth. So we cannot separate the Lordship of Christ in our lives without acknowledging that he is the Lord of all creation. Then ecological action is legitimate for a Christian mission because it is there throughout the scriptures. And so God's whole mission for God's whole church. Mission is not a special specialist activity for a few people. God has the church for his mission, not the other way around. Everything the church does is connected with the mission. It is his mission. We are asked to be partner with him. And so every church member's mission includes the whole of life 
If Jesus is the Lord of heaven and earth, then there is no place in which the Great Commission does not play any part or does not apply. You see, the gospel becomes believable when people see Christians living out this gospel and not only believing. You know, it is said, I read in uh, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, the Indian uh, freedom uh, or the creator of uh, uh, India. He once said, if all Christians do what they say or what the Bible says, or especially the Sermon on the Mount, I will become a Christian. Sometimes we have to struggle against those who bring the name of Christ, <clears throat> Christ to disrepute. We need a biblical realism, a radical diagnosis of sin, but also a biblical hope. It is not all about doom and gloom. God is going to restore this planet and bring into a condition which will be suitable for his people to live and worship him forever. And so to sum up this, the church is a family of people in which each family member has a personal relationship with Jesus, the Lord of creation. Then his mission becomes the mission of his church. And so in a nutshell, I'll finish with this. The Great Commission starts with us personally. And since every member is connected with the same Lord, they are united in obeying all that he has commanded. And so when we think about mission, we must first search our own hearts and become active in finding and learning about this Lord who claims to be the Lord of heaven and earth. This will then spark a flame within us for reaching out with compassion and passion. This is what we call the evangelism the announcement of the good news. It is my prayer that we come to understand the significance of the passage that we read this morning and see how it is connected with all areas of our life. It is in everybody's duty to tell others what Jesus has done and then to live it out. Amen. Let us once again um, stand together if we are able to. And this time we sing Mission Praise number 593. Send forth the gospel, let it run. <laughs>
Once again, we uh, turn to God in prayers. Let us pray together. Our Father, take our gifts of monies and our time. Use them to further your works throughout our land and your earth. Father in heaven, we thank you for the world you made for us. We ask your forgiveness for a lack of love of others for our unthinking as we speak, our disrespect to those less able through disability, physical or mental. You, Father, see into our souls and you know where we fail. We ask for your guidance and help to overcome our shortcomings. Father, we ask that we would not repeat the same mistakes of our past generations. Free us from the traps of old arguments and ancient battles and sins. May we discover a new way of living where the riches of some are not at the expense of others. May we use our energy and optimism to overcome the barriers and fences of the past. Our Lord in heaven, give peace to those in this congregation who are ill in mind or body. Give comfort to their families and friends who care for for and about them. For those who seek safety by moving away from war or troubles, protect them from the unscrupulous who are like wolves in sheep's clothing. For those you call to assist you in heaven, Give comfort to their families who are left here and there. All this we ask as your Son asked, forgive them. We ask, Father in heaven, forgive us. Amen. Just before we uh, sing our concluding concluding hymn, uh, let me remind you all uh, once again, there will be tea and coffee after the service, so please do come along to the main Hall for uh, that cup of tea and more chat. And now we conclude our service this morning. Last hymn is Mission Praise number 379, Jesus Shall Reign. Let us stand together and sing. you go from here may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to guard your hearts and your thoughts in Jesus Christ now and always Amen